All right, welcome to the Oxen Group of Nedley. My name is David Ristow. I'm the CEO, President, and Founder of the Oxen Group. Check us out at www.theoxengroup.com for all your financial analysis and investment ideas and needs. Um, in today's in today's Oxen Group of Nedley, we'll be uh, doing a recap on July 13th with our Wednesday market wrap up, taking a look at some of our new positions and other current positions and exits we've been taking, um, updating you on all of our uh, other portfolios, including Georgia's Corner and our long-term extended value portfolio. Forecasting the day for tomorrow, and as always, check out our disclaimer at the end of the video. Uh, today, the market had a nice update um, that ended a little bit poorly, um, but we did end our three-day skid to the red side um, after a series of pretty, pretty bullish comments were made for the, at least for the market in the short term. Um, Bernanke's Fed testimony came out, um, really helped pick up the market early on um, with a uh, some commentary about QE3 possibilities. Um, you know, China beating uh, its growth rate expectations, while it did slow down slightly, um, it was better, the numbers were better than expected. And you had um, QE3 uh, continually, continually um, being on the minds of individuals after yesterday's um, talk from some of the Fed officials about possibility that we may see a QE3. Um, that was the real crucial, I think, fundamental reason we did rally. Um, however, after the testimony came out, the market started to pretty much pull back for the rest of the day. Um, we had a Greece um, downgrade come out from Fitch. They downgraded to CCC, which is pretty much right above junk status um, on Greece. That was, I think, kind of renewed the fears about Europe. Uh, that I think people suddenly had forgotten and uh, helped increase the dollar. Um, you know, commodities had had a nice little rally after that QE3 news. That sort of brought them back down to earth. The crude inventories dropped also today, um, three million, more than 3 million barrels. However, that should be taken with a grain of salt because distiller, gas distilleries also dropped. Um, so I'm not sure who they're selling their oil to, but it's not to the gas distillers. Um, but oil did jump to 99 um, and then came down after the testimony ended and uh, the rest of the day was sort of a pullback mode. Um, the the key thing that really started us off on the high note was the China's GDP growth rate um, came in at nine and a half percent today. Um, some market makers are looking for, for a little bit lower than that. Um, and while it was a pullback, obviously from uh, prior um, growth rates, it was better than expected. And um, you know that still is a very tremendous growth rate um, and allows a lot of for a lot of um, potential for you know. Uh, to make money for companies and you know as a company continue, country continues to grow it's great for the American economy um, it was another very volatile session and we traded up early and then you see after lunchtime a lot of profit taking happened you know there is still that fear out there of Europe and I think people you know that were had some long positions um, were able to you know take some profits off the table I think you started to see some short sales really start to be put on in the afternoon uh, they really flamed out after that grease downgrade it was you know very uh, news packful impactful a day you know had a lot of news out right then um, and we approached it by taking a short on oil after our crude inventories came out um, we got in a little bit on the high side um, after the inventories come out at between 45 10 and 45 uh, 20 and um, but we're able to sell at the near the close for about a one and a half percent gain um, and take away some gains off the table, and we're continuing to hold this short. Um, you know, if you ever if you ever follow me or ever heard me talk about oil, um, you know, we, we have this stance on oil that basically oil trades in a very very uh, con succinct ranges um, for periods of time, um, and those ranges are then broken and reset um, only on extremely key fundamental fundamentals. Um, so right now, nothing really fundamentally has changed. I understand that, you know, there's talk of QE3 and there's, you know, there's the talk of the European debt crisis and et cetera, whatever. Oil's in the 94 to $99 range right now. 99 on the high side, 94 on the low side. We bought oil at 94, t wrote it up here, uh, sold it yesterday for uh, over 4% gain. Now we're getting back into shorting oil off the 99 line. Unless there's the actual announcement that there is QE3 or there's the announcement that, you know, something drastically is changing to margins or something is drastically happening, we're just going to stay in this pretty much this range until we get something that really fundamentally changes. It may be a lot of companies coming out showing some really good earnings or really poor earnings or another SPR release or, you know, 
really in with just speculation that really can move it between that range. That's what moves it between that range, but it stays very tightly in that range. As we're at the top of that range, you can see um, SEO bouncing right off that price channel, uh, holding the 50-day moving average, uh, riding that right up, um, and I think that we'll see another pullback tomorrow. I think the dollar will continue its um, intraday increase into tomorrow um, with the European debt crisis happening. It doesn't mean that I think the market will drop tomorrow um, per se. I think there's a lot of it, things that could that can move the market either way tomorrow, but I do think that you will see probably oil coming off these uh, highs today, um, selling off, uh, and a lot of you know futures players getting out of crude at these higher prices um, while they still can because there is no way that the government wants to keep oil at $100, especially after that first SPR release. Um, they're going to look very foolish if it stays up here. Um, we have also been trading um, CF. Um, we added um, another half position in CF yesterday to an already position we held. Um, very much like this stock was performed well, um, given, you know, any pretty much any market conditions going up we you know it's it's held this nice little price channel it's been in uh, the moving averages are, are moving up the 20 and the 50 um, are pointing upwards the 200 day is pointing upwards um, it's got good fast stochastics to the upside p potential to 155 for sure um, I showed you the chart yesterday that basically you know uh, this is pretty much matching on what happened at the end of May you see we got this big bar a little bit of a red day another nice bar to the upside a little bit of a easing day and then broke out um, up to close to 158 here 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 pretty much not exactly the same but you know a pretty similar uh, pattern that it's following here um, right off that uh, 200 or excuse me, that 20 day moving average similar to what happened here um, I like that I think that that's a technical um, a technical mirror and I think that that's definitely something to watch um, we are looking at CF going about 155 to 160 prior to earnings at the beginning of August. So um, we like this stock to continue up and we will be adding to it on any pullbacks that below our entry price. Um, other than that, we also exited uh, our app. We, you know, we were long on Apple um, starting um, this Monday um, and we exited our Apple bull put spread we had at 345, 340. Got an 87% plus gain on that option spread. That was a great one that worked out very well for us. Um, we're able to make some nice um, cash on that basically saying Apple couldn't go below 345 this week. Um, our other major monthly play along with CF was Dow Chemical. That one's not performing nearly as well. It's down almost 4%. Um, got hit pretty hard um, two days ago um, when the market did a big drawback and you know Dow's a stock that tends to really just kind of follow the market um, but I do still really like this position. We could add to it here. Um, we only have a quarter position on right now and it's not much. Um, however, I want to see if it can hold this $34 line before adding anything to it. Um, the stock usually rallies about the week before earnings and then usually rallies pretty well after earnings. So we're still waiting kind of in that waiting period for this stock to kind of move up. Um, for tomorrow, we're still, we are looking to short the market tomorrow. Uh, for Georgia's Corner, uh, he entered a new vertical put spread in Exxon Mobil at 77.50 to 75, um, basically saying, calling it uh, you know, a bottom floor on Exxon at 77.50, um, and I think he's looking to make around 12% on that uh, vertical put spread if he's correct on that. Um, so he can make about $125 per spread. Uh, two open positions. Um, he, um, he also has his U.S. Steel. He sold the 20, the 42, and the 41 vertical put spread. He also has Medco Health Solutions. I sold the 52, 50, and 50 vertical put spread. Um, and I believe that both of those move to the upside today. Uh, he's not here to do the actual nightly though. <laughs> Um, and then finally, uh, extended value portfolio. Uh, we are working t hard on the fast and casual dining equity analytics along with all the other trading we do. Um, just as a little preview, a little um, we did um, score and price in, um, finish up the pricing on uh, Einstein's, um, Noah, it's uh, the ticker's BAGL, the bagel company, um, and a little bit overvalued company there. We, we actually are probably going to initiate that as a seller rating. Um, and then Chipotle Mexican Grill we also did and uh, came out with a, uh, a pretty, um, we think a pretty good $315 price target. Um, yeah, I, th I think that the stock definitely has a little bit more potential probably to the upside given um, the way the market loves it. But I do think that this is a $300 stock um, and a lot of people that you know try and price this stock don't believe it is. And I, I see that and that will be um, fleshed out in our 23-page uh, report on fast and casual dining. Uh, for tomorrow... 
Uh, see it's probably dropping into the close. Um, we have the refresh here, PM fears. Uh, I'm sorry, we dropped into the close, and I think that was on refresh here, PM fears. Uh, there is a lot of information out there to tomorrow, and I think that a lot of it ha will have a lot of impact either way. Earnings are very important. We have earnings and after hours from Yum and Marriott. I haven't seen anything on those yet, how those numbers came out. And then we have JP Morgan and Progressive before the market open. I'd be hot and Progressive, not hot on JP Morgan. Um, Java's claims are tomorrow morning as well. I think that those, if those are weak, those could give a refreshed, um, you know, a a brief refreshment of you know what happened on Friday when the jobless number came out that everyone seems to have forgotten completely, um, and that could probably give a little bit more uh, weight to that uh, tomorrow. However, they're very good. Um, could also have a positive impact. Retail sales are also coming out tomorrow. I think those are probably pretty much priced in with what we got the report we got um, yesterday. Um, and then PPI is also out tomorrow in business inventories, which will have small impacts at best. Um, I do think the claims, the JPM numbers, and the Yum and the Marriott numbers are probably what will most likely uh, give uh, the most weight to the market. Um, that's going to do it for today. Visit us at www.theoxengroup.com. Email us at contact at Call us at 1 800 709 1160 and become a part of our 70% plus accuracy in picking stocks.